What is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. And believe it or not, the NFL regular season is less than three weeks away. That's right, we're going to be playing the Pittsburgh Steelers on Monday Night Football before you know it. And the New York Giants will definitely get a test. Now, the Pittsburgh Steelers are not the cream of the crop, but they're definitely at least an average football team and a, a team with an experienced head coach. Mike Tomlin's been there forever. The New York Giants come in with a lot of question marks, whether it's the roster or whether it's the coaching staff. Their head coach is only 38 years old. He's never coached it down in the NFL as a head coach. So the Giants definitely come in, come in as an unknown. And it was kind of a slow day today. So in this video... I kind of wanted to jump into some of the question marks that I still have with this football team that I think need to be answered before the start of the regular season if the New York Giants intend to compete with the Pittsburgh Steelers and just kind of overall in general throughout the regular season. And like I said, the New York Giants have a ton of question marks on their roster. And I will not even get into the coaching staff because we know nothing about Joe Judge as of now. We know his general philosophy. We know that it's going to change week in and week out. And based on opponent, the New York Giants will try to exploit their weaknesses. But for them to be able to exploit their weaknesses, I think a lot of things that we interpret as question marks going into the year need to be answered if we're going to surprise some teams. It's why I think the people have the New York Giants ranked as low as they do. And we all talk about that Daniel Jones needs to take a huge step forward in his second year if the New York Giants want to surprise some people. And I completely agree with that. And you take a look at a number of quarterbacks that have done that in their sophomore season. You take a look at the Rams. They went from, I think, 5-11 and to 11-5. and You take a look at the Philadelphia Eagles. Before Wentz went down, he was the MVP of the NFL over the first 13 weeks, and they won the Super Bowl. So there was no doubt about it. The one thing, that, above all else, that needs to really surpass expectations is Daniel Jones. But to me, there are a lot of other things from within the roster that need to happen for that to even become a possibility. Of course, a quarterback relies so much on his weapons around him and the offensive line. And of course, the first question mark I have is, can we get out of camp healthy? Last year, the New York Giants had a ton of injuries so far. Knock on wood, we've been relatively healthy with everything that you know is going on. We haven't had any really failed pandemic tests, um, corona tests rather. We, uh, we've really been relatively healthy outside of Cody Core. So, so far, so good with that. But the New York Giants are going to need to, an, to establish an identity. And we have a number of question marks on that offensive line. And, you know, and a lot of these will be sorted out through camp. Who's going to be our starting right tackle? Who's going to be our starting center? But we're going to need that offensive line to surpass expectations. That means that Nick Gates, who looks to be the starting center going into the year, needs to be, at a bare minimum, an average starting center in the NFL. Last year, John Halapiel was a absolute dumpster fire. Week in and week out, you saw pressure come up the middle against the New York Giants. Nick Gates, who's been getting rave reviews from the coaching staff, and you expect that in training camp, needs to live up to that and be an adequate center. And on the right side, we need solid production there. Of course, we all thought that Nate Solder was going to be the starting right tackle going into the season. That is no longer the case. Last year, we had Mike Remmers. He was horrible, um, <laughs> along with Nate Solder on the left side. We have a big question mark with Andrew Thomas, and some people may say, well, he shouldn't be a question mark. He was the fourth overall pick. He's still a rookie who had didn't have a normal offseason to get acclimated to the NFL. So I think the, these are question marks that need to be answered in a positive way if the New York Giants intend to surprise people this year, especially the, the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. Andrew Thomas needs adequate tackle play as, along at the right tackle, whoever they may pick. Right now I've said that I think the favorite is Camp Fleming. But if those guys come out there and give us lackluster tackle play week one and, and we look like a mediocre offensive line, we're not going to stand a chance, especially against a team like the Pittsburgh Steelers. Because they have some of the best pass rushers in the league, they will tee off on Daniel Jones. Which leads me to the run game and Saquon Barkley. That is what will set up the pass and make us less predict predictable. The good news is I like the new offensive line coach, Mark Colombo, and I like the scheme that he's brought in for the New York Giants, which is kind of a power-blocking scheme, which lends itself to the run. Of course, the New York Giants should build their offense around Saquon Barkley. We all agree with this. We have weapons at the wide receiver core, and if they could stay healthy, I think they're at least average, if you, especially if you include Evan Ingram. But the offense needs to revolve around Saquon Barkley. In the last two years, the New York Giants have only run the ball 35% of the time each of the last two years, ranking near the bottom of the league. That cannot happen this year, particularly week one against the Pittsburgh Steelers. A team with guys like Watt and guys like Dupree, they will tee off on Daniel Jones. We will have to establish our identity, which is a run-first football team in that game. And in order to do that, the New York Giants will need sound offensive line play. I have no doubt in my mind 
that Saquon Barkley can get the job done. And if all this comes into play, well then, I think Daniel Jones will be able to operate in an efficient manner. He will not have to force passes because the defense will not know what's coming. But at the end of the day, the biggest question mark for me on the offense is the offensive line. And it also... You know, the two tight end sets, the eye formation, how are they going to orchestrate? I think the New York Giants are going to have an old school mentality. They're going to max protect, and they're, and they're going to try to jam the ball down your throat. And in order to do that, they will need this offensive line to perform higher than what all the experts think they're going to be able to do going into the season. And if they do that, everything can change. Daniel Jones may suddenly become one of the top 10 quarterbacks in the league because when you have time to throw and time to orchestrate in the offense, you're going to look a lot better, something that Daniel Jones did not have last year. Now, I'm not going to put all the blame on the offensive line. Like I always say, Daniel Jones was a rookie, and hopefully he progresses, learns this scheme well, and gets better at, you know, in terms of identifying zone coverage, things like that. But the biggest key to the offense for me one is adapting to the new scheme, but two, that offensive line needs to take a big step forward real fast, particularly because we're playing teams with elite edge rushers throughout the first six weeks, and that need, they need to sort themselves out before the start of the uh, before before week one, and it will not be easy um, if we're going to surprise some people on the defensive side. What needs to happen for the New York Giants to surprise people? Well, I think we all agree that the defensive line, the interior part of it, is stout. I mean, Leonard Williams is a good player. Uh, you know, obviously Dexter Lawrence is a good player, Dalvin Tomlinson is a good player, we all know those guys, and I think they'll do their job. To me, that's not a question mark, that is a given. Um, where it really comes for me, the biggest question mark on defense, is how are we going to generate a pass rush? How are we going to do that? And they're going to have to sort that out throughout camp, and of course the second cornerback position remains a major question mark for this football team. Who will it be? Will it be Ballantyne? Will it be Love? Right now, we only have one sure-handed cornerback, and that, of course, is James Bradbury. Outside of that, we really don't have anybody with experience that we could really rely on, and that remains a big question mark. Will the New York Giants sign somebody to try to fill that void or at least provide depth? But the New York Giants, I think we all agree, are going to have a blitz-heavy defense, and in order to do that, they will need strong corner play, and it is something that I, I worry about. Last year, the New York Giants corner play was probably one of the worst in the league. Jenkins was okay, but Baker got killed week in and week out. We will need much stronger uh, corner play in this defense specifically if we're going to if we're going to win football games. Um, and it will not be easy. Like I said, with the lack of experience on this football team and the shortened preseason, I don't know if they're going to be able to get it done. That is by far the biggest question mark to me and the ability to create a pass rush. But with this scheme, you're not going to be able to create a pass rush if you can't cover Darnay Holmes, to me, is another question mark and a guy that I'm really excited about. Could he take away that slot receiver and be a very strong slot receiver, uh, slot corner in his rookie year? He looks to be on par to be that. Um, he's been great so far in training camp, and if that could continue into the regular season, that will go a long way. And, of course, the major question mark that has been with this New York Giants defense for the last five years has been our inability to cover the tight end. Week in and week out, we've gotten destroyed by the Cowboys, whether it was Witten, whether it was Jarwin, whoever it was. Whenever we went up against any team that utilized the tight end the proper way, the New York Giants got destroyed, and I still strongly worry about that going into this season. We, of course, brought in Martinez, but Blake Martinez is not known for his coverage skills. Ryan Conley p potentially could be the starting linebacker opposite him. Conley showed flashes last year in which he had two interceptions and looked decent in coverage, but is he good enough to cover good tight ends coming you know, coming out of the out of the backfield? And that's something that I think is at least a very reasonable question mark going into the year. And if he's not, how can the New York Giants sculpt this defense to try to combat that? Whether it's using a guy like Lorenzo Carter with a lot of athletic ability or bringing Peppers up to guard that tight end. But that will be a major question mark for the defense. How will you take away the middle of the field for the opposing offense? And how will you generate pressure? And those are the things that must be answered. In terms of the roster, well, we're going to have to wait and see You know how all these Inter-squad scrimmages play out, and I'm, I'm sure that will start to play out, but I, I think we're starting to see where guys are going to be playing. I think Nick Gates is going to be your starting center. I think there's a very good possibility Cam Fleming will be the starting right tackle. On the defense, as of now, I would say Love would probably be your starting corner, and it looks like Darnay Holmes will be in the slot. The two safeties, I think we all know, uh, with McKinney and Peppers, and the defensive line's pretty cut and dry. The only question mark I have with the pass rushers is how will the time be distributed? I think that we know the four guys that are going to get it, be getting the majority of the playing time with Marcus Golden now back in the fold. But we'll have to wait and see how it all plays out. But those are the major question marks that need to be answered going into week one. And the biggest one, as I've said this entire offseason, 
is the offensive line because I still think our defense is our weaker unit. Even though they played, you know, well, supposedly yesterday in the inter-squad scrimmage, I still think this team, if they're going to win games, it will have to rely on a ball control offense to keep that defense fresh, and it will rely on Nick Gates performing well at that center spot along with the rookie Andrew Thomas and whoever we have on the right side. So those are the things that need to happen if the New York Giants are going to surprise teams in 2020. As always, guys, if you liked what you watched, please subscribe, drop a comment, maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.